Hello, I'm Maxine Anderson with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition C, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 3rd. Individuals who are paid to directly contact city officers to influence their legislative or administrative actions are called lobbyists. Their activities are regulated by the city's lobbyist ordinance. The ordinance does not address indirect lobbying, also known as expenditure lobbying, where persons solicit or urge others to directly contact city officers. Proposition C would define an expenditure lobbyist as any person or business who pays $2,500 or more in a calendar month to solicit, request, or urge others to directly lobby city officers. A yes vote means you want the city to regulate expenditure lobbyists by requiring them to register with the Ethics Commission, pay a $500 registration fee, and file monthly disclosures regarding their lobbying activities. A no vote means you do not want to make these changes. I'm here with Elena Schmidt, a proponent of Proposition C. We're also joined by Debbie Lerman from the San Francisco Human Services Network and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. I'd like to start with some opening remarks. And we'll start with you first, Debbie. Thank you, Max Maxine. Maxine, Thank yes. you, Maxine. Our organization has officially opposed this measure. Last year, we worked very closely with the Board of Supervisors, which was amending the current legislation on direct lobbyists, and the board chose unanimously to exempt nonprofits from the legislation because of the potential chilling effect on nonprofit advocacy. The city relies on a diverse strong nonprofit sector on the front lines of health care, safety net, environmental issues, and other social issues. And this legislation, this ballot measure, will cause nonprofits to be afraid to engage in advocacy. I have worked for many, many years with nonprofits that have misconceptions around the complex rules. Many think they're not even allowed to lobby. The IRS, increases its scrutiny of nonprofits that do extensive lobbying. The foundations hesitate to fund them, and we need to be sure that they can engage in the public debates. Thank you very much, Debbie. And Elena? Thank, Thank you. I appreciate the League putting this together. Um, let me say that this proposition, Proposition C, for me, the key to it is transparency. Before I go into that, let me also note that the Ethics Commission is the uh, organization that put it on the ballot. The Ethics Commission is an independent, uh, independent commission. It has the authority to put something on the ballot. It had a series of hearings on it and open meetings on it so that everything could be discussed. And they voted unanimously to put it on the ballot. It's the first time in 10 years that they did. What Prop C does is that it restores what San Francisco had until 2009. It affirms that the voters and the citizens should be able to follow the money and that the dollars that are being used for lobbying should be open and explicit to the uh, electorate. Um, there has been an enormous change since, I'll stop. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for those remarks. I'm sure within my questions, you'll have an opportunity to continue your thoughts. Thank you. Because my first question to Debbie uh, is going to be, um, this measure sometimes couches increasing transparency. Do you believe this ballot measure increases transparency in city government and our elections? I think that this legislation would have unintended consequences. It will discourage nonprofits from advocating, and nonprofits are often the only way for the have-nots of our city to organize themselves to speak out on issues. The, the Ethics Commission could have instead worked with the Board of Supervisors and the many advocates we have in San Francisco to develop something that wouldn't have had unintended consequences and that we wouldn't be able to change. So 
It may increase transparency and reporting, but more likely it will lead nonprofits, instead of saying we're going to register, to say we're just going to advocate less, and it will decrease transparency on the many issues that we debate every day. Okay, thank you. And Elena, how do you feel on that? I think transparency is key to all this, and I think that the nonprofits already have to report, any 501c3 or c4 has to report to the IRS, and previous to 2009, uh, they were reporting to the Ethics Commission also, and that there were a number of them that did. It didn't seem to have a lot of tampering or dampering effect at that point. I think that the reason that it went through the Ethics Commission is because the Ethics Commission is independent and not subject to political pressure the way the Board of Supervisors can be. And that I think it's important that when you have regulations out there that cover a certain class of, let's say, 501c3s in this case, it is only equitable that it should cover all classes of, of the 501c3s. So I think that's important. I think the other thing to remember is that since 2009, we had the Supreme Court ruling on Citizens United, and that Citizens United meant a tremendous influx of dollars uh, that were unregulated and undisclosed. And they often set up nonprofits in order, because that ensured that there would be, uh, they did not have to list their donors when they were a nonprofit. So that what we're trying to do is to make sure that everybody is covered and that everybody is treated equitably. Okay, thank you very much. And going along with that, um, so we can get some sense to the, to the people who view this, do you think this measure, ballot measure goes far enough or do you believe it goes too far, in your opinion? And we're going to start with you, Elena. Thank you. Uh, it's an interesting question. I think that there has to be a number of issues that need to be looked at within the world of lobbying. But this, what this does is basically restored what we had before, makes it all inclusive, which is what we had before, and that it is an enormous first step and one that could make a difference down the road. Okay, thank you very much. And Debbie? It goes way too far. It was not necessary to include nonprofits in order to get at the types of problems that Elena has raised here. The, leg the, the ballot measure will require for-profits to disclose their expenditures. If a for-profit corporation establishes an AstroTurf nonprofit, the for-profit corporation will have to disclose all of their expenditures that they use to create the nonprofit and give to the nonprofit for the purpose of lobbying. Okay, thank you very much for your answers to those questions and for the help you're giving to the voters of the city of San Francisco. And now we're gonna have your closing remarks. And for closing remarks, we're gonna start with you, Elena. Uh, okay, thank you uh, again for having this and letting us have a chance to talk about it. As I say, I think the important thing on this issue is transparency. I was the foreperson of the civil grand jury in 2013, 2014, and we looked at the Ethics Commission, investigated the Ethics Commission for you know, eight plus months and came out with a report. This was one of our recommendations in the report, that this part uh, be restored. So uh, certainly after all that scrutiny, this was a good step in the right direction. I also want to say that uh, I've also been with nonprofits, both in terms of being on the board, being a staff member and all that. I understand the, the constrictions of time, but I think that if you accept the shield of the government by being a nonprofit and accepting what goes with a 501c3, you should be willing to be treated equally with other nonprofits and be able to uh, put the information out there that the voters need so badly. Thank you very much. And Debbie, your remarks. Well, first of all, nonprofits are engaged in advocacy not for financial gain, but to make our community a better place. And by, in, by passing a ballot measure that will require nonprofits to pay a $500 fee for the privilege of expressing their First Amendment rights, we will have a situation where nonprofits will simply advocate less. The more burdensome, the more complicated we make the rules, the more nonprofits say it is not worth the risk of, of trying to comply with all of these ordinances. It is not worth the trouble 
of having to file all these reports. We do not want to have duplicative leg uh, legislative schemes, and we want our nonprofits to be out there expressing their opinions. The First Amendment can be messy. We know that. We don't always agree with the people that are expressing their opinion, and that's what it's about. We need to empower nonprofits to counter the money that's coming from the haves versus the have-nots. Thank you, Debbie and Elena. Thank you both for your comments and your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thank you for watching. <laughs>